Power Up with NSA North Texas, a show about finding, hearing, and maximizing valuable insights from some of the world's leading business and lifestyle speakers. Each week, International Keynote Speaker and National Speakers Association North Texas Chapter President Betty Coffey sits down with some of the most exciting speakers this side of the globe to hear from these subject matter experts what's making a difference in business today and learn all there is to know about people, profits, and productivity in business from some of the world's best motivators. This is Power Up with NSA North Texas. And now, here's your host, Betty Coffey. Hi everyone, I'm Betty Coffey, President of NSA National Speakers Association North Texas Chapter, and I want to welcome each of you to our show today. The National Speakers Association is the premier organization for professional speakers. We're number one across the globe. And we have, we have motivators, we have coaches, we have consultants, we have educators, we've got trainers, we've got, we have phenomenal speakers that speak every day about some of the cutting edge issues that businesses are experiencing. What are those cutting edge issues? What are those issues and, and, and things that they, messages that they want to get across to their companies? Well, they ask our NSA North Texas chapter speakers to come speak to them. And you're going to hear from those subject matter experts today. I'm so excited about my guest today. My guest is, is Deborah Hunter Johnson. She is fantastic and she's a powerhouse. Deborah is a speaker, trainer, uh, consultant, and coach. She has 30 years of experience in navigating entrepreneurial, large corporate, and nonprofit organizations. She offers actionable tips to organizations that will, are you ready? Are you ready? Accelerate their wisdom curve. Did you know we have a wisdom curve? I didn't know that we had that, but we're going to find out about it. Accelerating how to accelerate your wisdom curve. And that assists, all, that assists all different types of professionals in both their business and personal lives. Deborah has served on high-level leadership positions in business in the Dallas community. She's been the vice president of, a and a, of HR and an associate general counsel with American Airlines. Currently, she is the UTSW Presidential Advisory Board and chairs its Marketing and Public Affairs Committee. She's owned a consulting firm, her own consulting firm, since 2007. She speaks, she trains, she consults on a number of topics, and especially the one I'm really interested in today, in accelerating your wisdom curve. Deborah, Deborah's pretty darn exciting. Um, Deborah has, she speaks about 21st century leadership prowess. And I'm excited to hear about that. Tell me about that a little bit. Well, 21st century leadership prowess. Today's business world is very complex and the skills that made us successful in the 20th century won't fly today yeah. because guess what we're competing with artificial intelligence so we have to stay a step ahead and the way to do that is to accelerate your wisdom curve i love that i love that so the question is think about this would it be beneficial to have someone curate the best tools and information for your organization what's working out there what's not, customize it to your and tailor it to your company and your organization, would that accelerate your progress? Absolutely. Absolutely, because leaders today are busier than ever. Just responding to emails alone could be a nine to five job. And no matter how well intended you are, it's the tyranny of the immediate. Right. That crisis of we the all day. Have that. Absolutely. So you never get around to being strategic and growing your business and growing your career. Great, and we're also gonna learn about how to soar. How to, what to do if you want to S-O-A-R, how to soar. Soar stands for being able to self-determine your roadmap. O is outmaneuvering and outsmarting and outshining your fears. A is for accomplishing connectedly, right? I love connecting. And R, respecting the journey. That's so, right. Okay, so let's get into our questions. Well, I think everyone wants to soar. And remember, the wisdom curve is the speed at which you become wise. And I help people save time and energy while accelerating their career progression. So I tell people what they need to know now mm -hmm. so that they can more quickly turn missteps and mistakes into lessons learned and winning moments. Everybody wants to soar, self-determine their own roadmap. Today's employers expect you to come to the table ready. Exactly. And just think about if you have your own ideas about a business, 
but you know you need to figure out a roadmap to get there. I love that. I love that. So I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued by the SOAR concept and accelerating your wisdom curve. Tell me a little bit about you and what it means to, to how you got into this and accelerating a person's wisdom curve. Tell me how you got started and then let me start learning about that curve. All right, I'd love to. I've had the good fortune of working in a number of industries. I've been in private practice at a law firm. I've worked for American Airlines, Chrysler Corporation. I've consulted in the pharmaceutical business, the entertainment industry, retail. And so I've seen leaders across the board, very dynamic, very smart people fall into traps under stress. For example, the whack-a-mole approach. (laughs) <laughs> Betty, you know that arcade game. Yeah, I used to you play the, it all the time. Right, you get the Whack rubber hole. mallet, and the goal of the game is to keep those moles in the hole. So you spin all day long, whack, 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 whack. But is that strategic? Would it be better to take a moment and figure out, how do we get rid of the mole problem forever? Oh, I've seen leaders allow disrespectful cultures to blossom because they don't take the time to have those tough conversations with people. I had a boss who actually, and she was at the top of a very important federal governmental agency Mm -hmm. when I was a legal intern. Right. And I walked by the copy room and she was making copies. And I asked her if she needed help. She turned it down because she said, these are very complex copies and only I can do them. Oh, geez. And as a legal intern, I'm at the bottom of the food chain and I (laughs) knew that there had to be other people that could do that task for her. Exactly. So I felt, I saw these issues and felt that I could help people out in this space. I love that. You said that you're, in your experience, in your career, you, you, you found a way to help business accelerate, help people accelerate their learning curve. Share some examples of accelerating your learning curve. Well, keep in mind, there are lots of core attributes that people need to have no matter what your job is, no matter what your leadership level is. For instance, everyone needs to know how to negotiate. Mm -hmm. So I have a workshop on the art and science of negotiation because actually we are hardwired to have certain attributes, particularly there are differences between how men and women negotiate. So I highlight those and give people a strategy to be successful in negotiation. I love that. We all need to know how to manage conflict in the workplace. We all need to know what our level of competence is and what we can do to increase it because there is a direct tie to confidence and success. So I work on some of those issues with people. I love that. So talk to me about how you are a a curator of information. How does that work? Well, as a vice president of human resources, again, I had to help develop and cultivate and engage thousands, tens of thousands of employees. And it gave me a bird's eyes view to books, tools, diagnostic testing that I could actually put into use and become wise on what tools helped people in different situations. So I've done this for decades. So I can help people cut through the noise and get more quickly to the information that they can turn into knowledge and then turn that knowledge into wisdom. Love it. If people had the time to do it on their own, they would, but they don't. And that's why I'm here to help do that. So you just said something I think is really important. That wisdom, wisdom equals knowledge plus experience. That's right. And by and gaining, bottom line, that's what you bring. That's right. And I bring my perspectives because everyone doesn't have to learn through the school of hard knocks on their own. You can learn from other people's hard knocks. And I share my perspectives because I was a woman of color that navigated to the top of a Fortune 100 company. And I had to learn how to do that, keep my spirit intact, and keep my value system intact, and have a good sense of who I was. Very admirable. Very admirable. So you speak, you train. There's a lot of people out there that speak, that train, that coach, that consult, and they work with great leaders. You've given us an idea of what makes you special and what makes you different Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Do you have a team backing you up? Tell me a little bit about your operation. I would be happy to. I have a network of people from my work in various industries Mm -hmm. 
that I pull in whenever I need them. I know neuroscientists. I know lawyers. You all need a good lawyer, okay? <laughs> no matter how scary. Exactly. People <laughs> who are experts in communications, people who train, people who design training, psychologists. So whatever the needs are, because I am a firm believer that you need to get to the root cause of a problem. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're solving for the wrong problem. And many times you need to draw on the right people to help you do that. So for instance, I've seen situations where someone comes in and, and they hear about a problem that a client has and they jump to solution automatically. I dig a little deeper. So say there's somebody who's having trouble making deadlines, mm -hmm. getting to meetings on time, handling their book of business, handling their leadership role. Mm -hmm. Someone might automatically assume they need a good cal calendaring system with prompts that helps them keep themselves organized. You might dig a little deeper and find out that the person really doesn't like their job. And that is why they're not That's right. being successful in it. Right. And you need to solve for that problem, not just the symptoms. Makes but sense. the root cause. And that's what you go after, the root cause. Yes. Um, give, give our audience a little bit of an idea as far as who your typical clients are mm -hmm. uh, and what are the typical issues and, and goals that they want to achieve. What do you see out there? The people that I help are companies who need to develop, motivate, and retain their talent because being able to do that drives the success of your company. And I help people design strategies so that they can engage their people. A lot of people have a thirst for wisdom. Mm -hmm. They want to know, how do I grow my career? So I have a workshop that's called the Roadmap from Technician to Trusted Advisor. Love that. Because when you get to a certain leadership level, everyone's competent. Everyone has the technical expertise. To rise up the ranks, you have to have wisdom. And so I have identified 40 attributes that people need to have to rise up to that next leadership level. And we go through those in the workshop. Oh, that's wonderful. And it's personalized, right? Personalized. Oh, I love that idea. I love that idea. I want to mm -hmm. sign up for one of those. Yeah, Thank I'm you. ready. <laughs> All right, I'm sign ready. here. <laughs> um, so what approach do you use when you have a client? What approach do you use to help individuals and businesses accelerate their wisdom curve? How does it get started? It is, very, it is a very collaborative approach process and that's a good question that you asked me how do I make it all work it's collaborative because I have to listen and understand what the clients needs are and I use my SOAR strategy S-O-A-R yeah, right self-determine the roadmap De figuring out what your goals are so we can set a roadmap for you and then this second one I cannot overestimate outmaneuver your fears a lot of people talk about overcoming your fears. And Betty, you and I have talked about this before. It's true. You don't really overcome fears because fear is an emotion that helps keep you safe. Back in certain days where you had a fight for survival, you needed that adrenaline and cortisol in your body. So it keeps us safe. But it some, sometimes it can create barriers to success. And it comes up on a daily basis. So rather than thinking I overcome my fears once and for all, which nobody ever does, you outmaneuver them on a daily basis. And I help people with strategies to do that. I love that. When I have listened to you, you talk about confidence a lot. Uh, you, you talk about confidence. And I, I want to understand why do you give confidence so much emphasis when you are working with your clients? Well, what I found, Betty, and I admire you because you are so confident. You are such a confident leader of NSANT. Thank you. And that was something I struggled with uh, in my career. I was focusing on being smart and diligent and hardworking, but inside I was a bundle of nerves until I started recognizing that I had to think about confidence differently. And there are a lot of studies out now, a lot of neuroscientists right. and psychologists are doing studies right. that show that confidence is the stuff that turns thoughts into actions. Oh, that's true. Absolutely. That's, that's and so that true. you need confidence. Confidence is the igniter. You get that little kernel mm -hmm. of confidence to take an action, it builds more confidence. Then you ask some more. You gain more confidence. Get the momentum going. Right, so Love it's a momentum. virtuous cycle, a confidence cycle. Yes. So I focus on that now because what I recognize is the sooner you understand the role that confidence plays in your life, 
the more successful you'll be. Love it. There's a book that I really like. It was written by uh, Kay and Shipman. It's called The Confidence Code. And what they have said in the book is confidence is no longer the sideshow. It's the main event. Really? Yes. Really? Confidence is at the root of most things. So that's why I talk about it a lot and focus on it. I know when I'm talking to someone, and it maybe it might be a selling uh, situation, uh, it might be somebody coming to the house to work on the air conditioning, heater, whatever, or giving me some advice. If they don't have a level of confidence in them, if they don't have, if they don't, if I don't feel comfortable with their confidence level, I'm not going to value what they have to say. That's right. I, I can sense that right off the bat. You're Animals absolutely can sense right. That. People make buying decisions based on who they trust. That's right. And who they feel confident about. Because not the smartest person. No, right. But if they're confident, then they must know something. That's if they're right. Gonna, they're not going to let you down. Right, exactly. Right? You hit true. the nail on the head with that one. Yeah. What um, You've done a lot of different work with men and women, and that fascinates me too, how they differ in so many different ways. Can you kind of give me some information on that when you're dealing with confidence or whatever, how women approach something or how men approach it differently? I would love to, and that's a great question. I do a workshop called Emotionality and Leadership Success. Ooh, because I again, like that. if you go to what neuroscientists are seeing about brain biology today, uh -huh. men and women do come hardwired to have certain attributes and be more dominant. For women, for example, we on average tend to be great multitaskers. We can do a lot of different things. We can analyze lots of chunks of information. We can stay organized. Mm -hmm. And that's a wonderful benefit. We can do massive amounts of work. Right. But at the same time, that part of our brain that has all of that also ca causes us to ruminate. Oh. So we can get a hold of a problem. It wakes us up at 3 in the we morning. We go too deep into we it. We overthink. We ruminate. And many of us beat up on ourselves. Why am I doing this? Many times we're hardwired for that tendency. So we need strategies to reframe and rewire that thinking. So we can change that. We can. We can get, we can show improvement. We, we can get can better. We can show improvement. Even if we're right. And then for men, for instance, those pesky little hormones <laughs> can undermine their success. Testosterone. Men generally tend to have higher rates of testosterone, which is good because it le leads to high level of confidence, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. Which is good. We just talked about that. Exactly. But too much testosterone can tip the scales. Yes, it's true. So then someone's overly aggressive, and that's not a good thing. In no matter what form. Business, organizations, politics. Yes. Yeah, there right. you go. That's right. Yeah, it's interesting. So I talk a lot about that so people have a better sense of their hard wiring, how home hormones affect them so that they can develop strategies to be successful. I, I really enjoy speaking with you because confidence, confidence as a subject or a topic is not something that people dwell on. You don't hear a lot of it, yet it is so important. It is. How, what, what can companies do to increase the overall confidence level of the people in their organization without taking an extreme measure of getting everybody a, a, a personal coach? What can they do? That's a good question, too. One thing that I found, and this was in my experience of trying to create a positive culture where I worked, uh -huh. you have to understand the root cause of any conflict in a culture. You have to provide a safe and respectful culture so for people to speak up, down. for people to have the confidence. The certain behaviors have to be modeled from the top, but there has to be a sense that there's open dialogue as well. And the more that you manage differences in the workplace yes. through training, workshops, modeling by leaders, the more innovative and a collaborative work environment you'll have and studies show that that increases productivity in a company wow makes so much sense i love this i love this i do too it's fascinating you were busy um we were talking and you expressed to me that you you've been very busy so it's been tough to get you on the show so i'm happy to have you here well today. i'm glad to be here but you were very very busy and very keenly focused on some of the top issues we have in our culture today and one of those is the me too movement uh, tell me about that. What are your, some of the takeaways from those experiences as, as you've been working with different people on that? Give us some insight there. 
I certainly will. The Me Too movement has been a game changer in our society. Um, as a, an attorney, mm -hmm. I've been involved in harassment issues for decades. These laws have been on the books for a long time. But what has changed society's thinking on this? Two things, technology and social media. Because <laughs> anyone with a device and a Twitter account is a reporter. They're powerful. Absolutely. And so issues that could be buried and resolved quietly mm -hmm. no longer can be. And companies are recognizing that they have to change how they address these issues. They have to go again to the root cause and start protecting their employees by educating them on how to deal with away. cultural differences. That's right. Because you have all kinds of people in the workplace today, right? Gender, culture, customs, languages, religions, and then they're all together in the same space. Exactly. Not sure how to navigate. And so smart companies are training their teams, educating them making sure that they understand the new rules of engagement. I love that. And that is so timely and so important. It's not going to go away. It is not going away. It's and I have done, I think in 2018, I did about 80 workshops did you on really? culture and tied to sexual harassment issues. So I saw a lot and I see that at their core, most work environments are thirsty for the information. They want to understand. They don't want to offend anyone. Yeah. They want to know how to navigate. So this is good timing for companies I love that. to do that work. Okay, you've mentioned that you've done so many presentations and workshops and everything else. So tell, tell our audience a little bit about some of the customized, because I know you customize everything, So about some of the customized events and workshops that you have. I know you do key presentations. So let's start there on your presentations to motivate, educate? Yes, some of the things that I really enjoy doing for companies is helping their teams increase their confidence level. And I have a keynote that's called Leveraging Confidence to Help Your Team Soar. Oh, there's my soar again. And I challenge uh -huh. people to think about confidence differently uh -huh. as fuel, as not a destination in the distant future, but as a tool to help them achieve their goals. Love and then I have another keynote that's called Fake It Until You Make It and Other Bizarre Leadership Advice. Because that's one of them, fake it till you make it, keep your head down, have you oh, heard that yeah. one? Just keep working, keep your Just head down. work hard and people will notice. None of those strategies ever worked for me. So I wanted to dispel some of those myths and right size things for people so that they know what they can do to increase their confidence and achieve. That's awesome. So those are a couple of your top presentations. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me about your workshops and yes. training seminars right. and how you delve more uh, d deeply into some of these topics. Right. Give me an idea of how well, they work. Well, I think to help accelerate a person's wisdom curve, again, you get to some of the core attributes they need to be a trusted advisor and to be wise, as we talked about before knowing how to navigate conflict mm -hmm. in the workplace and mm -hmm. have those crucial conversations. The art and science of negotiation, because we all negotiate in our Every personal day. lives Everything. as well as our work lives on a daily basis. And again, the one that I really enjoy, going from technician to trusted advisor. Ooh. The earlier people recognize you have to build trust, what trust looks like to people, the more successful they will be. Love it. Okay, and do you do one-on-one -on -one coaching or was it mostly group coaching or organizational coaching? I do one-on-one -on -one coaching okay. and I tend to do it in a non-traditional way because I am not a therapist. So I can help people achieve their goals. So generally I work with people on a 60, 90, 120 day basis. We set some specific goals. Mm -hmm. We build strategies mm -hmm. for the plan. They launch it, but then they go off and execute because you need time. Again, that confidence cycle, build up confidence to act, right. to get more confidence, to learn from your actions, to see what setbacks you had, what lessons do you learn from it so you can keep on that confidence cycle. And I know you're always consulting. You're always I consulting am. to help organizations with that safe, respectful, collaborative working environment, right? I do that, and I also like to work in the community uh, focused on young girls and women and confidence because it's very much needed. I love it.
Okay, so if our audience wants to get in contact with you, tell them tell them how they can contact you. Sure. There are multiple ways to get in contact with me. I have a website www.debrahj.com that's d e b r a h j.com or you can email me at wisdomcurve at deborahj.com. That's W I S D O M C U R V E at deborahj.com. Again, D E B R H J.com. Or you can just call me. Here's my preference. <laughs> right. 214 850 4581. I'd love to hear from you. I love this. We could have talked so much longer. I know. And, and go Is into some up? of these. Yeah, almost. Oh. Yeah, almost. It's almost time for our last words. But I love talking with you. I love the your approach to things, the wisdom curve, the fact that I can change it and you yes, can get better. That's right. Hey, there There's you go. Time. Um, and, you know, I always start these shows by saying we have our, our leaders and our trainers and and our consultants and our speakers, and they are on the cutting edge. They are the subject matter experts. You truly are. You really, truly are. Well, thank Deborah you. Hunter I appreciate Johnson. that. You truly are. Uh, you go in there, you do your homework, you do your research, and you bring the absolute top, top knowledge to a person or an organization, a company, of what's what the latest is. Well, I enjoy the work. And I love that. That's the subject matter expertise that makes our National Speakers Association so unique, so different, and so important. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. Okay, so if you have some last words, last words you want to leave our audience with today, what would it be? Wise people are made, not born. Wise people are made, not born. Think of confidence in a new way as fuel to help you achieve your goals. I love it. (laughs) Thank you for being my guest today. Well, thank you. It's been very exciting. And thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Remember, it's all about powering up with confidence, Deborah. With confidence. right. It's all about powering up and soaring. I'm going to get a little mileage out of this. It's all about powering up to be better, to be faster, to be stronger. Thank you so much for joining us. I'll see you next week. Thank you. And thank you. Thanks for listening to Power Up with NSA North Texas. To find out more about today's guest or NSA North Texas, visit www.speaker.org. To find out more about Power Up, visit our Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash groups slash NSA North Texas. And to find out more about Betty, visit www.bettycoffeepresents.com.